While tensions remain on Earth, Russia and the United States have been cooperating in space to return an astronaut and two Russian cosmonauts. Russia's Soyuz capsule left the International Space Station earlier and landed in Kazakhstan six hours later. NASA's Mark van der Heij ended 355 consecutive days in orbit, returning to Earth with ISS commander Anton Shapkalerov and fellow cosmonaut Peter Dubrov. Well, let's talk to Professor James Head, who's a trained astronaut crews in geology and surface exploration and helped to select the landing sites for the Apollo moon program. Um, James, what's today's mission all about? Is it pretty standard stuff? Well, it's very interesting. It's, uh, you know, basically understanding uh, the international aspects of space exploration is really critical. I mean, I think today was a very successful demonstration of how two countries can work together, that people can work together. Uh, I think that's what we need in the long term. Uh, all of us have had the experience of traveling to other countries, learning about other cultures, saying, wow, why do they do it that way? That's better than the way we do it. Or maybe I don't like that or whatever, but you understand. And I think Cooperation in space, such as we see in the International Space Station, builds a foundation of understanding uh, at the person-to-person -person level. I mean, these astronauts, both Russian and Touchdown. United States, train in their respective Touchdown. countries. Confirmed. They learn each other's language. They have to speak each other's language. They have to work together. And then they're like in an experimental test tube in the space station for international cooperation. They spend months together. They eat together. They live together. And they come back very, very close friends at the end. So I think international cooperation in this sense is building a foundation for the future. Despite the political difficulties, the people are what count, and we really need to think about people-to-people -people kinds of cooperation. So that's really what the International Space Station does, I believe. Well, sorry to uh, interrupt your uh, wonderfully optimistic view, but of course there is a war on. Let me ask you about future work and future collaboration between Russia and other countries. Where does this uh, invasion of Ukraine leave us? Well, it's, it's a very difficult time, no, no question about that. And I don't mean to underestimate the significance of this awful situation in Ukraine. I have many Ukraine scientific colleagues on, in communication with them on a daily basis. They're still alive. They're being shelled. It's a, it's a terrible, terrible situation. But, but they're all thinking also to the future. They're very optimistic people, um, as, as the Russians are. And you think, I mean, I think we really need to, uh, as we do in science, we, we interact on a person-to-person -person basis, and that builds trust, if you will. Um, you know, clearly, uh, the sanctions are really important, and this is going to have an effect. For example, the European Space Agency and Russia will not cooperate on the upcoming mission that was supposed to be launched to Mars. Uh, there will be penalties. There will be outcomes of that that will affect the science, but I think it's critically important to maintain a foundation of interaction so we have something to build on uh, when the situation changes. In crude terms, could Russia leave someone up there in space or refuse to help out? Well, I think today was a good example. Mark coming back with two Russian colleagues on a Russian spacecraft, um, I, I think no one would leave anyone up there. Certainly the United States has the capability commercially to bring back our, our astronauts and other International Space Station astronauts. And certainly if there was a problem uh, in the International Space Station or with illness, uh, we would certainly bring back any Russian cosmonaut uh, uh, using U.S. vehicles. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, as we've demonstrated today, um, that Russia would do the same, despite the, the situation. Uh, briefly, are we able to quantify the impact that the uh, Ukraine invasion has had on uh, scientific exploration in space, or is it too early to say? No, I think it's a, it's a very large impact. Uh, clearly, in planetary exploration, the interactions... Uh, you know, we have we have coordination, which is like, okay, you're doing this, I'm doing that, and we will uh, coordinate, but we have cooperation where we actually work together on something. And the European Space Agency and Russia are working together on something, and that's not going to happen. And I think more of that will take place in the future until the situation in Ukraine uh, is resolved. James, good to have you back on the program. Thanks very much for your time and expertise. Professor James Head at Cape Cod. Thank you very much.